Okay, we going? So a few months ago, this French student called Quentin hit me up on Instagram. He was filming a documentary project for school and wanted me to be a part of it. A few weeks later, he was on a flight out to the garrison. He recently sent me the final project and told me I could post it if I like. So that's what today's video is. I'm Kyle Skelly and I've been tricking for 10 years. Actually, maybe more like 11 years now. I'm from Scotland in the UK and I do this thing called tricking. Now tricking is a sport that not many people know about. It's very underground. It's a lot bigger now than when I started but still if you ask anyone's parents do you know what tricking is, they have no idea. Tricking is a mix of kicks, flips and twists, although that's a really lame way to explain the art form that is tricking and it's definitely evolved over the past 10 years as well. Essentially, it's an aesthetic movement, an art form really, more than a competitive thing. Although there are some competitions now. But tricking is really just a mix of flips and twists and people having fun and experimenting with it. And that's sort of what it is these days. It did evolve from martial arts, but I don't think it's... I wouldn't call it martial arts whatsoever these days. Early days as a young kid, I was always jumping around, uh, like most kids, you know, climbing trees, jumping around, trying flips before you even know what flips are really. Tricking was kind of the easiest thing to get good at fast, or at least have something that seemed kind of impressive to people. And one of the most appealing parts of it was that it used just my body. I don't need anything else. I can literally do it everywhere. Um, so the thing with tricking, being a relatively underground sport, there really isn't the sort of structure that you have with skateboarding. There's not sponsors that are going to pay athletes cash prizes, or there's nothing like that in tricking. So because it's so small, it is very hard to make a living. Now, like one interesting fact, pretty much the best tricker in the world, or at least for a very long time, Michael Guthrie, when he was the best tricker in the world, he was also working in Subway. And you don't find that in skateboarding, you know, the best skateboarder in the world, they're getting paid to be a skateboarder. Tricking doesn't have that. I would say one thing I've managed to do, and the rest of the people that I live with, the garrison, we're a team from the UK, we're just four friends that live together, we have this house that we're filming in. And we've all found different avenues within tricking to sort of make an, make an income out of. We've built certain platforms to monetize tricking in a different way because that Currently is really the only way to do it. Now for me, I built a clothing brand, Plan Zero, and I also make uh, YouTube videos as well. And that's one weird way that I've managed to make money from tricking. Um, Kojo, another guy I live with, he has an online coaching service where he teaches people the trick. He makes all these tutorials, has a subscription-based website. And that, both of those things were things that hadn't been done in tricking, but now they have. So, because it's so underground, we can't, make money from being the best trickers at the moment so we got to find different ways to monetize it if we want to make it our life and also grow the sport at the same time.
Yo, shout out Quentin for the video. Thank you for making that. I'm gonna link up his stuff in the description. So if you wanna go check out his videos and stuff, check it down below. The new Plan Zero clothing collection that we've been working on is now live. You guys can buy it. There's a link in the description. Everything just went live. There's only 50 pieces of each item. So if you wanna get anything, be quick. I'll be back soon with another video. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. Keep training, keep killing it. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Yeah.